This is Rod Jones for One Lord, One Faith, One Baptism.net and Edifying the Body Ministries. And these are our endeavor to do just that, edify the members of his body. What we're doing in this study here is we're looking at how to be of the same mind and how we ought to speak the same thing with one accord. Now, in, in looking at that there, just at the outset there, how to be of the same mind and how to be of the same accord. We're going to see many verses that tell us that we ought to speak the same thing. That we, we ought to with one mouth glorify God the Father. But oftentimes today, you don't see that taking place across the world. Across the world, man has his own way of thinking and his own uh, uh, way of uh, uh, telling someone about God or or what the faith is. You got many faiths all over the world is what they call it today. As if you can, it, as if it's okay for everyone to have a faith. You know, and when I say okay, I'm, I'm saying it in the sense of in the sight of God. How God would look upon the man and is it okay that everyone have their own convictions? Is it okay that everyone have their own uh, a way of speaking when it comes to God's word? And even those who say they, um, even those in, in Christendom, there's over 35,000 different denominations within Christendom itself. Which one's right? Does it matter? And these are the things that we're going to look at in this study here. So if you will, let's get ourselves underway. Come over to Romans 15. Romans chapter 15. And let's take a look at verse 5. Romans 15 verse 5. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now you see there it says, the God of patience and consolation, because God is, will grant grant you to be like-minded. And this is the way, this is how God would want us to be. This is the way he would have us to be like-minded one toward another in Christ Jesus, and with one mind and one mouth glorify God. But folks, today, you have many Christians today think it's no big deal that if a person speaks a different thing and they'll say well you know he has his way of doing things we have our way of doing things we sure get it done don't we that's not the way God the Father would have you to worship him he wouldn't have you to do everyone to uh, have a different way of glorifying God with different mouths and or, 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 or different minds, a different way of thinking about his word. Even those who say they understand the Pauline distinction, the Pauline differences and, and the, the, the doctrine uh, uh, given onto us and the, and the dispensational change, even those say that it's okay. Hey, he, you know, he, he, um, he believes something different. But hey, we, we can still come together and th that's not the way God the Father would have his saints to be. You see that over there in the Corinthians uh, uh, epistles. They were divided. There were divisions among them. That doesn't mean that they were, that they were as we call it, they beefing or that they, uh, or some will say they fell out. That doesn't mean that that was the case at all that they parted ways or, or just had a strife and they were upset with, with each other. That's not what that's speaking of. They were, they were um, trying to glorify God with different mouths. That's why Paul opens the epistle in 1 Corinthians, Paul opens the epistle to them it, speaking of that, they, that there'd be no divisions among them. And we're going to look at some of those verses. But come over here to uh, Romans, while you're in Romans, come to chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And I want you to notice all the times, there's so many different verses we could have touched on that explain how the saint ought to be of the same mind. Let's look at one here. 
Romans 12 verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Now when this says, be of the same mind one toward another, and mind not high things, you ought not to tell me what you ought not to mind. Your mind ought not to be thinking that you're uh, uh, higher or, or above someone else. But Paul says, be of the same mind one toward another. And when Paul says that, folks, he's talking about, he's talking to me and you as well. And we ought to be of the same mind. Have the same agape love. Have that same understanding about God's word of truth. Because the plain fact is, if you don't have the proper understanding of God's word of truth, what's going to happen is you're going to be tossed to and fro. You're going to be carried about with every wind of doctrine. And the reason why that is is because you have a different way of thinking about his word. And folks, there is a way where we can all be of the same mind. Where we can all mind the same things. And we're going to get to that at the end of the study. But... This is part of the carnal-minded Christian and the spiritual-minded Christian. And all you have to do, folks, is when you think with a spiritual mind, oh, with God's word of truth, you can be brought up unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You'll be able to understand when you, when you are led properly by the Spirit. And when I say properly, I'm not talking about that it's something that the, the Spirit's not doing its job. When I say the Spirit, God's Word, the living Word of the living God, it ought to resonate and live within you. I'm saying that you're not allowing it to take effect as it, as it ought to. We carry around a lot of carnal baggage, so to speak, when it comes to what, we, uh, what, when it comes to what our, the, the inner man wants and what the inner man seeks after. But let's look at more verses here. Come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And we're going to look at, right at the outset of the whole chapter, Paul's uh, uh, a plea onto the, uh, the Corinthians there. And, he, and, he, and it is a plea. He's beseeching them. Let's look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, 1 verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, uh, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. He opens up the epistle this way. Now, look at this here, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, same judgment. Now, is that the way it is today, folks? Do we all speak the same thing? When I say y'all, I'm talking about when you drive on your way to wherever you're going, just on your daily walk. Some of you can look right out your window and, and there's a church building in eyes view. And that's the case amongst the, the world today. But do they all speak the same thing? Do they all mind the same thing? Are there divisions? Are they in the same judgment? That's not the case. And you, you see, Paul, I beseech you, brethren, they all speak the same thing. There be no divisions among you. But man today thinks there's nothing wrong with having divisions among us. Man today thinks uh, it, it's, it's fine if there's divisions among us. Because this gives man another reason to go make a name after himself. And, and, and we see this all the time. You have, you have thousands of people going to theological schools, but they'll come out of there and you'll have a um, Methodist come out, he'll go his way, uh, Presbyterian, he'll go his way, and, and so on. Even in the, uh, uh, the other, uh, uh, whether it's the Catholic, you got different, different, Types. There's orthodox. There's all different. You name it. Man has come up with it. 
as you see what God did with the when God divided the man he divided the man the man wanted the man said come let us make a name after ourselves and that's what it's about today folks but the division is being done by man and man is going out to uh, 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 put his own stake on things but that's not how your father would have things to be done let's look at some more verses here come over to um, you own your you're over in first Corinthians now let's come over here to um, Philippians Philippians chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 let's look, take a look at verse 1 Philippians 2 verse 1 if there be any consolation in Christ any comfort and love any fellowship of the spirit if any bowels and mercies fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord of one mind now see when Paul says here in verse 1 any fellowship of the spirit and we we we, we, we we're gonna go over that issue about the spirit and look at that that spirit is the living word of God if any fellowship of the spirit or in other words if any fellowship of the living word or the word of God if any bowels of because it ought to be if any bowels and mercies fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded and that's having that mind according to the spirit be be of fellowship that togetherness of God's word having the same love and that's how you learn it from the spirit the living word God's the, the Bible having the same love being of one accord of one mind now folks when you see that there do you think it's okay that and when I say do you think I'm not going to going upon what our natural carnal mind has come to know and we're born into this world we're born into a world that has already charted chartered its own course it's it's already charted the course to say this is how man operates now when man uh use the term that they use out in the world when the, when a man finds finds god or when a man becomes justified and he wants to know God. Now you're taught. Now you have to live a. You, I mean, you, you're going to have a whole different lifestyle. You're not. Your your conversation is not here on this earth. You you're a citizen of of of, of, of uh, heavenly places. There. You are translated onto the kingdom of his uh, onto the kingdom of his dear son. Now, as I said. How do you think we ought to uh, uh, view what the way this world lives in a sense of it's okay to have a church building over here, a church building over there? Now, man would say there's nothing wrong with it. People are free to worship however they want to worship. Who are you to judge them? God's word tells us something totally different, folks. God's word tells us that we ought to speak the same thing and if there is uh, a church building on every corner they ought to be speaking the same thing but it's just that in the locations that they're located that man could could uh there could be a man a bishop pastor uh, uh, uh to, to to teach them god's word where they can understand his word and truth as he designed Let's look at more verses on this. More uh, Philippians chapter 2. Let's take a look at verse 19. Verse 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Tim Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded like who would naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Jesus Christ. But ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father, he have served with me in the gospel. Notice it says he has no man like minded who will care for your their state. That's their standing. That, that's 
He wants to know the, their their fellowship of spirit. Their their um, um, uh, make sure that they have the same understanding, the same as we're going to see faith. And as he said here, for all speak their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. And he has served with me in the gospel. Now, what Paul is saying there is, to Timothy has, was like-minded with him. And it's not just the idea that, well, they're, they, they, they think the same way, they believe the same things. You have that all over the world today. There's many people that are like-minded. Even, even the unsaved are like-minded. But this is according to God's word, what God's word says. Not because someone someone has a um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, all these theological schools and they have the same denomination there. They say, well, we belong to America, uh, uh, African Methodist, whatever the situation is. Or, or we belong to the Jehovah Witness, and and there's over a million of us, millions of us. Well, they'd be like-minded. That's not what this study is about. That you be like-minded according to man's traditions and man's wisdom, after the course of this world. And we see uh, God the Father speaks of man being like-minded in the Book of Romans. He talks about man did not like uh, a man didn't retain God in his in, in his, his knowledge. How man actually they they uh, went after this world. Or when you look at when uh, with the flood, the flood came about because man's only thought was evil continually. He they were like minded, and when you're looking at what what's being said there is that like mindedness is not the same like-mindedness that God the Father would have us to to, um, uh, to to be about his word. But man today would have you to be like-minded according to what this world says is good, what this world says you ought to abhor. When this world says something is, is legal or, or, um, or just in their sight, they would want you to sign up with that. And not sign off with with you know, well I'm against uh, this this issue here or that issue, but let's that's why we have to be led by God's word alone. Let's take a look at uh, uh, chapter chapter three, chapter three Philippians chapter three. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, and that's what it's about. So perfecting, be thus minded, if and if in anything ye be otherwise minded you see you see thus minded and otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you now that's going to happen God's going to reveal it by what we see in chapter 2 verse 1 there that by the spirit by his word how else can God reveal this to you folks but he will he's, he's not going to uh, uh, Give it to man like as man says today, whereas he's going to give you revelation. No. Paul received the revelation. God reveals this unto us because his word is resonated. That's why he says, let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. In other words, having the mind of Christ. Nevertheless, whereunto we are have already attained. And notice he says, whereunto we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Now see, see that same rule, let us mind the same thing. There was a rule set forth based upon what God's word says. There was, we have doctrine that is designed to build us up from the floor up, from the superstructure foundation on up to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ to 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 fully understand the breadth the length the height the depth of all love and knowledge and we ought to mind the same thing it's the only way we you can get there folks not get there by the way of of uh well let's 
Let's do a little bit of this. Oh, and let's let's have our own handbook. People do it all the time. I said the Catholics do it. The Mormons do it. They got the Book of Mormon. The Jehovah Witnesses do it. All, all of the um, the denominations have their own set of handbooks where they use to say, well, yeah, we have God's word, but we, we also have a, 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 little, a little devotional to go along with it. That's not how God would have you to do. He would have you to be of the same mind, mind the same rule. It's the only way perfection in his word, in the faith, is going to uh, uh, take place. Let's look at more verses here. Come to verse 18. Verse 18. For many walk of whom I have oft, I've told you often, and now tell you weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is in their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our, uh, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you see... Uh, the enemies of the cross of Christ. These are ones who mind earthly things. Their mind, you see where their mind is? Their mind is on earthly things. Their God is in their belly. Their glory is in their shame. Your conversation ought to be in heaven. Meaning, you ought to look for things you see not. You ought to hope for things you see not. You ought to um, uh, not look for things you can see. Set your affection. You're supposed to set your affection on things above. You're supposed to know the things you see are temporal, but man today teaches the, the complete opposite. Their whole uh, service or uh, when, when they get together and have, have church, their whole, their, 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 their whole uh, message is about carnal issues only. It's about carnal things. It's about a... a, a a walk according to uh, what this world says is spiritual or godly and, and you, you see you see the uh, uh, a man today will tell you what God is doing and, 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 and assume God is tied into the circumstances they'll say well, I have a beautiful family thank God again what about the other saints that can't have any kids what about the saints that lost their kids in a fire? What about the saints that that um, uh, children uh, got kidnapped? Whatever, whatever the situation, God's not with that saint. That saint's not a blessed, blessed of God. We have to think about what we say because that wouldn't be spiritual. That would be actually ungodly. But this world tells you certain things that, of that nature. I say, well, no, well, certain verses say, but see, that's just exactly what I'm talking about. Because you look at it with a carnal way of thinking, assuming that what you see, God's word says, well, then that, that, that ought to apply to me. His words. You have to think about things, folks, that God is not uh, restricting his love to, to others, but pouring it out on others. That's not the way your father operates. And when we deal with the issue of sonship, we're going to look at how God the Father would have us to all cry out a father unto him. And that adoption that we're given is, is something that you're entrusted to take his word and, 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 and think like he does. Do things his way. Work together with him in what he's doing, not what man does today. Let's look at more verses. Come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And let's take a look at verse, uh, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now you see there, but the spirit of which is of God. The spirit which is of God is going to cause you to know something. That's what this verse says here. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 
But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, which, of course, the natural man cannot receive uh, uh, the things that are written in God's Word, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. And you see there, this is, it, it, it's a knowing. That's, this is, and we're, we, we're going to, the next study is going to be on um, uh, the Spirit. And, and you, we're going to see that there. Um, but for they are foolishness unto him, unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. My point in looking at this here is we, you have to look at, you see, uh, comparing spiritual things with spiritual and knowing something. What you ought to know is what you ought to be able to, what you've learned. And folks, when we think, when we actually say that well, everybody has a right to believe what they want to believe. It's, you know, who are we to say? And when we say things like, well, yeah, he got his own convictions, you know, and, and that, that's just the way it is. You know, as if it doesn't make a difference. In other words, what we're actually saying is, this is the way God would have man to be. That God's word is is so um, trying to choose a a, a a a proper word here. If God's word is 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 so uh, 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 hard to be understood, or um, it, it, it's not it's not uh, concrete enough where man can get the proper understanding. That man has to man goes about it his own way. That there's different avenues. And we don't treat any other book in the world like that. There's no other book in the world that we treat like that. You can even take some of those Egyptian tablets or or or, or um, whatever else you find, and man's going to be one of accord, be of one accord with that. Even if there's different thinkings about it, you only have a a couple of people with different views. You only have. A few people that would disagree. Well, with God's word here, it's not the case. Everyone has their own way of thinking. Is that how God would have you to think about his word or to understand his word? But see, what happens is, folks, man's wisdom comes into play. Man's wisdom, instead of reading the Bible the way he ought to, Man's wisdom come into play and says, well, I see what it says. Well, maybe God is, is saying this. Maybe he meant to say that. Maybe his word is just too complicated. You got all those these and thou's in there. Hey, let's change it all together. Let's, let's just uh, come up with, our own, with another book. We'll call it the Living Bible or the... Uh, the New World Translations or, or the, all the other ungodly books that there are mm -hmm. that don't follow the same uh, uh, manuscript, the, 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 the majority text. But let's look at more. Come over to uh, uh, chapter 2. Uh, we're in chapter 2. Look at, uh, let's look at verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now you see, uh, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? We have the mind of Christ. And folks, having the mind of the Lord and having the mind of Christ is following what the Bible says, following what his word says alone in a spiritual, in a spiritual thinking, with spiritual thinking. You, you could take certain verses, and I could just point to any verse on the book. And if you read it with a carnal way of thinking, if you read it after your flesh, if you read it after the things of this world, you're going to assume God's word is saying something that it's not saying. 
And any verse we could, I, I could pull out of here, if you read it with a carnal way of thinking, as if God is physically doing things today for the man, or giving man knowledge, or uh, a, a man is uh, God's favoring one saint over another saint, or that um, God, God is doing signs and wonders, or he's healing man today. Um, the list goes on, folks. The list goes on. But if you have that same way of thinking and you have those glasses on and you go to read God's word as that, you're going to assume that God is, that this word is saying something that it's not saying. But if you go to God's word with the spiritual mind, understanding what God has done for us already, how he has already shed forth his love, there's going to be fellowship of the spirit. There's going to be a togetherness. There's going to be unity of faith. And we're going to look at that verse as well. But come over here to uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, let's look at verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is okay. No, that's not what it says. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now you see what the carnal mind is, folks? The carnal mind is functionally death. You could be a justified person, but be carnally minded. And you see it's possible. But you are to know the things of the spirit. That's, you see that? The things of the spirit. The things of the spirit. The things of the spirit is the things of the Bible. The things of God's word. But the minding the flesh, as verse 5 says, minding the flesh is you minding things of your flesh or minding things of another man's flesh verse 7 but the carnal mind is enmity against God it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God now folks how many people are going to say that they are enmity against God how many people are going to say that they can't please God how many Christians are you going to find anywhere that's, that says, yeah, I, I can't please God? You're not going to find that. But what you can find is a lot of carnal-minded Christians who mind the flesh, who mind earthly things. Their mind is on the things that they can see. You're told to hope for that you see not. For what a man hope for, why doth, well, for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Why would you hope for something that you can attain yourself, that that could come to you? What would you what, what would you hope for? Oh God, pull me out of this! You know, I I I, I just got laid off and my bills are due, and, and and I need if you could just pull me out of this, God. Yeah, it's gonna be due next month too. Just like you paid last month, or 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 or, or someone else can pay it for you. That's not the way God's love is shown to us. But that is people going to God's word and getting carnal things out of his word and assuming that this is the way God operates. But in actual fact, this is the way man operates. This is the wisdom of men is what we see going on today. You see the spiritual wickedness of the wisdom of men and the spirit of this world. Let's look at more verses. Come over to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And let's take a look at something here. Romans 1 verse 11. For I long to see you that I might part, impart on, to, on you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now what Paul is saying here, what I was after is verse 12. 
When Paul says that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Mutual faith. What does Paul mean by that? Paul wants him to have that same understanding, that same, be of the same mind, be of the same rule, mind the same thing. Paul wants to be able to say, you know, those Romans, they're like minded. I have no group of people like minded as those uh, uh, Romans. They're the same mutual with mutual. There, there's a togetherness. There's a fellowship. There's, a, there's the same accord. But let's look at verse 11 here. Paul says that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. Now, that's what I mean, folks, when, when I say people can look at certain verses like that there and assume that that means um, spiritual gifts, that is, uh, speaking in tongues and healings and, and do, doing miracles, getting knowledge from God. That's not what Paul wanted to impart on those people, on those guys. That's the last thing he wanted to impart on them. Because you got to remember, the spiritual gifts that was, that was in operation at that time was looked upon as the less excellent way. That was the less excellent way for God to get his word accomplished and get his word done. And you see that by looking at Ephesians chapter 4, when it, when it tells you uh, 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 right there, in Romans, in Ephesians chapter 4, that uh, it was given till we all come into the unity of the faith. And I, we're going to look at that verse as well. But th th there was a time. But that spiritual gift that he's given is the is knowledge. Spiritual knowledge. That's the gift he to, that they be may be established and established. That word takes a stabilizing effect within that same within those saints there. That's the perfection or the perfecting. That, that there be a stabilizing effect that to the end that they may be established. And at the end of Romans 16, established. Now, again, that's what, what I mean by when you look at a verse with carnal glasses on, you'll assume that that means spiritual gifts speaking in tongues because they're looking at it in a carnal way. Not with the spiritual mind. Now let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to look at the verses that I spoke about there. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's take a look at verse 2. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. With all lowliness, of my, lowliness and meekness. With long suffering. For bearing one another in love. Now you notice, you notice that selfless thinking right there. That's, that's selfless thinking that we went over before. In that in the godly love issue, how we ought to treat one another, because we are we're, we're doing we're being conformed to the image of His Son, we're going to be like the Son, long suffering, lowliness, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, <coughs> in love, not just because you because you're going to put up with the person, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Now you see this here, it says endeavoring, that's what I'm after here. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now, and this is, there's one body, one spirit, even one hope in your calling. Keeping the unity of the spirit, folks. Is keeping the unity of the living word of God, the faith, the faith. As you see here, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's that's what this is. Look now, look at that again. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. Now, when we go over the issue of the Spirit in the next study, we're going to look at that that verse again there. And the unity, being united, being being as one. And notice, Paul's going to use it many times, different words for togetherness, being as one. And you notice he said, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. 
you, you're, you're told that. that. That's the unity of the spirit. That the unity, the, the, the same common faith, the same mutual faith, the same mutual faith, folks. It, that's how you, it's the, you, you, the unity of the spirit there, the unity of the living word of God living within you. Being of one faith, being of one mind. But again, if you go to that verse with, with, with carnal glasses on, you're going to assume, oh, I see the word baptism. Oh, that must be there's only one way to be baptized, and that's immersion. Oh, no, 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 it's not. Uh, uh, you you got you to gotta dip two times a head. Oh, no, 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 it's not. You have to do infant baptism, or you have to sprinkle. Oh, no, no. There's so many different ways that man would look at that verse. There's so many different ways that even ones that say they rightly divide the word of truth will look at that verse. They're going to assume something else when looking at that. Unity of the Spirit? Oh, well that must mean unity of, 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 of the, uh, the third member of the Godhead. And, well, I see all the wonderful things he does, does for me. And again, folks, you have to um, look at God's word spiritual comparing spiritual things with spiritual spiritual things are the things that you already know that are freely given to your god you compare them and say well let me go with what the spirit says oh that doesn't line up that's not but let's move on here uh, ephesians chapter 4 let's go to verse 11. and he gave some apostles and some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. You notice, see that word perfect or perfecting again? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. This tells you right here that those gifts, those same gifts, even people today that say they rightly divide God's word would think are in operation today even those you see here, it was to a per, it was to a particular time. Till it was a reason why, and and and, and you were going to see that in a little bit. But for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for that final body of Christ, and it's going to tell you what we're going to look at the next verse, and it's going to explain the rest of that. But God's not giving the sign gifts today. And we don't even need to touch on that. I know many of you understand that. But as I said, many, many people think that some of that stuff is still in operation. We have people today will tell you what God put on my heart, the good Lord put on my heart to say. Or, well, I was uh, uh, thinking and God gave me to say, that's to say that God spoke to you. You have prophetic gift. The Lord from heaven has given you word. Yea, hath God said. And that, that, that's total, total um, ignorance of what God's word actually says. That's looking at it in a carnal way of thinking. But let's read on there. Let's read on. Uh, verse 13. Till. Now this is when. This is when uh, he gave all those those sign gifts and things like that and for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, till we come on, till we all come into the unity of the faith. You remember you seen earlier, it said unity of the spirit. Now you see, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God onto a perfect man, onto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be, be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. As you see, there was a point till we all come into the unity of the faith. Being in, being of the, being in the unity of the faith is being a perfect man, folks. Is it is having the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ is what we ought to be brought up unto. Knowledge of the Son of God. 
and you can see what takes place here. If if that's not the case, you'll be as you'll be as children. You're just you can be justified. Tossed to and fro, carried by whatever you want of doctrine. By the slight of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And you know why that's the case? It's gonna be the case because you're not gonna be of the unity of the faith. You're gonna be, well, I know the faith, but I'm I'm still carnal. I'm still minded of the things. It, when you have a spiritual mind, you're not going to be brought up into a perfect man. All your thinking is going to be based upon your own flesh. It's going to be carnal, but it's enmity against God. You can't please God. You're not going to be brought up into the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. You're not going to you're not going to have the knowledge of the Son of God properly. What you're going to have at best is you're going to have a, uh, a, 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 a basic understanding about some of the things that God is doing. Yeah, you're going to understand justification, but and you're going to say, well, I have a heavenly vocation, but you're not going to truly understand it. Because when you go to his word, you're going to assume certain verses mean certain things. I hear people all the time say, say certain things like, well, you know, well, maybe the rapture isn't going to come or uh, are being caught up. Maybe that happened already or uh, all these other things people come up with because they're looking at God's word with carnal glasses on. But let's, let's read on here. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. And that's all spiritual things. That's all things that concern the Father. And the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the head, even Christ Jesus, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And notice that says it may grow up unto him in all things. We ought to grow up. We, we ought to be and be no more children. Notice he used the word children, then grow up. Unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, and in looking at that there, looking at what that says there about edifying itself in love, and 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 uh, 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 that we may grow up unto him. Now, when you think that there is speaking of a togetherness. You, you would ought you, you I would hope you would a, a unity unity of the faith and many people misuse that word when uh, the faith and as you see here the verses that we've seen Paul says have that mutual faith that's that's having the same mind that's that's being of the same mind it the same um uh, 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 accord, uh, uh, walking by the same rule, and because you gotta think about this here, most people say, "Well, no, the faith is is." Um, matter of fact, even the, the Catholics themselves, they say, "Oh, he left the faith." But see, it that's not man's doctrine is what the faith is. The faith is the ministry the what we have and I'm not talking about just any man's ministry I'm talking about what the Lord and Savior that the fullness of stature the measure of Christ the knowledge of the Son of God the knowledge what God is doing God's will not man's will and we're gonna get to I'm gonna clarify that I don't want, I don't want to get ahead of myself here but come over to uh, uh, Timothy chapter 1 um, Timothy chapter 1 I, I'm sorry um, yeah, First Timothy chapter one. I'm sorry. First Timothy chapter one, uh, verse three. As I besought thee to still abide at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, Macedonia, that thou might charter some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions, but rather than godly edifying which is in faith. So do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. 
from which some have swerved and turned aside unto vain jangling. Now you see it says, no it, it, doctrine. You see, no other doctrine and uh, godly edifying which is in faith, so do. And then or not to have faith unfeigned, but charity uh, uh, out of a pure heart. And people turned aside onto vain jangling. They're saying something. That's their own doctrine. It's their own faith, folks. It, it, that's their, that's man's own faith. That he decides to um, uh, uh, stick with and, and have unity in. Unity in his faith. But you're told here that doctrine, doctrine is uh, 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 what is what what is what is the the root and ground of faith? And let's look at something else here. Uh, let's look at verse eighteen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that by that by them thou mightest war good warfare, holding faith and of and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have have made shipwreck of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander whom I were delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blasphemy and Paul says Paul tells Timothy war good warfare but see and this is another verse according to the prophecies which went before on thee now most people say well hey Paul laid hands on Timothy and Timothy got knowledge that's not what that's saying, folks. If that was the case, why didn't Paul just go to the Corinthians and do that? Why, why is he laboring and suffering to death when he could just go and people could come to Paul and Paul can lay hands on him and they get knowledge? And we'll, we'll touch on that later. Uh, holding faith. That's, that's what I'm after here. Holding faith and a good conscience. And you see, you can hold faith which some having put away concerning faith, you can put away faith. Now, as you see here, it's possible to hold faith. It's possible to put it away. That's because when we look at God's word, his living word, the, when we look at the spirit there, or, or when you see verse says the unity of the spirit, this unity of the, unity of the faith, we have we, that, that doctrine that we're told that we're to be brought up onto, onto a perfect man. It, it sound doctrine. We are to be established by, established by. That is, that, that's, that's what Paul says that he's going to, uh, uh, that he hopes for that mutual faith. That he imparts some spiritual gift onto them to the end that they may be established. In what? The faith. God's living word living within us into God what God's will not man's will not uh, a different way of thinking that that man has today but let, let's read on here uh, let's go to chapter 4 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And you see here it says people are going to depart from the faith. And, well, what does that mean? They're speaking something. See, speaking lie, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines. For people to give heed to something, they have to, they have to uh, uh, leave or put away the faith. Depart. You see it says they can depart from it. And... They, they get brought up onto another doctrine, another faith. You notice it says doctrines and seducing spirits, uh, it, it, speaking lies, and they're speaking something. They're, uh, it, it's doctrine. And, and, and what you see, folks, is man coming along with his own faith. A denomination is a faith. Uh, uh, a a, a uh, religion is a faith. And most people say today, oh, they're a person of faith, and that's supposed to mean something. As if it's okay if, if everyone, you know, speaks different things. 
who are we to judge? Yeah, we'll let God work it out. God has one faith, folks. And um, you don't believe me, you can just think about the verses we just read. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And that baptism is once a man trusts in Christ Jesus and, in his, and, and he, he trusts in the redemptive work on the cross and trusted him as his redeemer, he is, he is redeemed and from, from the debt and penalty of sin. But come over to chapter 6. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's look at uh, verse 9. But they that will be rich will fall, uh, fall into temptation and in a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some covered after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now you see you can err from the faith. In other words, uh, call, you can uh, look at it carnally minded. You see what erring from the faith is? Love the money, loving money, foolish lusts, temptations. Hey, you can see that there, folks. That's carnal. But you know what? 98% of all Christianity whether they want to believe it or, or, or acknowledge it or not, have that problem there. When it says about the love of money, 98% of them will teach that gain is godliness. That if you have, you are blessed. That you are uh, the blessed of God if you have things. And you're told right in, right in there that that uh, if a person teach gain is godliness, withdraw yourself from them. And uh, uh, the, or the pastor is the richest person in in the uh, in in the, in their in their church. Why is that? He ought not be. He he ought to be the most the more most lowliest. He ought to freely give. It's more blessed to give than receive. But that's looking at it in a carnal way, folks. That's thinking with a carnal mind. That's erring from the faith. That's erring from the co the common faith. The, that's that's erring from sound doctrine. It, it's destruction, as you see on the pages of, 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 of God's word. It's not me saying that, folks. Let's read, let's read on here. Let's look at verse 6. I mean, verse 11. But thou, O man of God... Flee these things. What things? That, oh, those are carnal things. You know why? Because they're enmity against, enmity against uh, God. They can't please God. Look at this. Flee these things and follow after. Now follow after. This is what the faith is. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. When that says, lay hold unto eternal life, that's not saying he's not justified. Hey, you know Timothy was justified. That's lay hold on, on in other words, hope for, that you, hope for that you see not. Set your affection on things above. Verse 11, flee these things, follow after righteousness. What's right? The things that are right. He's not telling you to follow after being justified, being righteous in the, in the sight of God. This is follow after right things. Notice it says flee these things. Then it says follow after righteousness. In other words, get away from those things that are unrighteousness, unrighteous. Follow after righteousness things. Godliness. That's thinking like God does. Doing things his way, working together with him and what he's doing. Faith, love, patience, meekness, folks. He, he, when you're looking at those things there, you know, we spend a lot of time on that verse there. But when you're looking at that there, you're, tell, you're, you're told what how a man of God ought to think. And how a man of God ought to uh, 
uh, uh, uh, conduct himself and such. And the what he ought to long after, what he ought, what he ought to flee, and what he ought to follow after. And that's having that mutual faith there. That and righteousness and love and, and all the things you see in there. But as I said before, and when I said 98% of all Christian, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being, um, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt because many, many, many Christians feel that it's okay and, 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 and it's, uh, uh, that, that, that if, if their pastor has more than they do, then what's wrong with that? He, he ought to drive the best car. He is our pastor, you know. Come over to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's take a look at verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 15, ver 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not rep reprobates. Notice Paul says, examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. What Paul is saying there, he's saying, exam take a step back and look at yourself. Examine your inner man, not examine, hey, you know, maybe I need to change my... No, examine yourselves. Take a look at yourself. Take a look at what your inner man is. Is your inner man only this small? Does your inner man have the doctrine built up within it? Examine yourself. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own self. What you ought to know how you ought to be, how that saint ought to be perfected. And and, and that's what Paul is, is is saying to the. He says, whether ye be in the faith, he's telling these Corinthians, take a step back and look at yourself. You ought to be in the faith, not not in belonging to some denomination, but in the faith, in the will of God. In the doctrine that that, that that is that is set to bring you into a perfect man. Now let's take a look at some more. Come over to verse eleven now, verse eleven, and we're going to see we're going to see uh, we're in verse we're looking at verse six there, and look what Paul says here. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be what perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Now notice there, be perfect, be of one mind. You notice that there, perfection, one mind. And folks, when we started off the um, study there, we looked at being of the same mind. We looked at verses that told you to be perfect. We looked at verses about the faith, having that being in the faith. Do you see the correlation there? Do you see that being of one mind and speaking the same thing, minding the same thing, and it is being of one mind? And do you see also that that perfected, the perfecting can only be done if you are speaking the same thing of God's word and truth or, or according to the faith? Do you, do, you, do you see that there, that that being of the faith and, and being in the faith and not departing from the faith or not putting away faith? Uh, do you see that that's the only way to be a perfected man? To be brought up unto the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ? Yeah, I, I, I hope you do. But let's move on. Come over to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at verse uh, verse 5. Galatians 5, verse 5. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Now notice it says, for we through the living word of God wait. We through the living word of God. And it says the Spirit here, but we, through the living word of God, wait for the hope of righteousness. That's how you wait for the hope of righteousness. You do it by his word. His word, when you're reading his word, 
It, you're to hope for that you see not. Set your affection on things above. You're, you're to not mind earthly things. Wait for the hope of righteousness. How? By faith. Notice it says, but faith which worketh by love. And folks, the faith is how we are, how, how, a God's doctrine, how we are to be of the same rule, be of the same mind, mind the same thing with the same love, be of one accord. All that oneness that you see there, that's part of that one faith. That's the one faith there. And as you see here in the verses that they, they plainly point out to you, that oh, that perfection is what God hopes for and what we ought to hope for as well. Let's look at one last verse here. We're going to close. I have confidence, ver, uh, verse 10, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will, that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his own judgment whosoever he be. Paul says he has confidence in them through the Lord that they'll be none otherwise minded. And most people look at that verse and they'll, they'll say, well, hmm, well, we're not going to be otherwise minded because God's just going to give me the give me the knowledge. I pray to him, he's going to give it to me. That's not what that's saying there. None otherwise minded is you having your mind following after this world. And folks, when you've seen when Paul was telling the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians there that, that there be no divisions among them, that they be of the same mind, they had different minds. You have people, Paul says, ye are of Cephas, ye are of Apollos, ye are of Paul. They had, they were, they were otherwise minded. But they, you have some people of the same mind. They were just going different directions. Well, I'm going to follow this guy because he was given the keys. I'm going to follow Apollo because he was um, came on to us first and all these other things. But guess what? That's not how God would have you to do things. And regardless what this world is doing, whether they're having a church, on every, church building on every corner, our understanding ought to be that God the Father would have no divisions among us that he would have us to speak the same thing, that he would have us with one mind and one mouth to glorify him, that he would have us to be in the faith. He would have us to be brought up unto the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ, unto a perfect man, unto the knowledge of the Son of God, and not be tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man, whereby he lie in wait to deceive. And, and, and man does this. And you see uh, uh, when it talks about in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctors of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and so on and so on, folks. Because some can depart from the faith. They can give heed to seducing spirits, but you can be tossed to and fro. You're going to be speaking different things. You're going to be otherwise minded. And I hope this all is all coming together. And, and, and leave me comments if you have any any issues with this. If I have to do another another study or or refresher, then then then, then I'm going to uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put that forth. But um, uh, folks, again, as I said as I said before, there, this world is going to go after what this world goes after, and that's the wisdom of man, because man is following the spirit of this world, and the spirit of this world would have a church on every corner. Because when you're doing that, you're doing exactly what Satan wants to be done. Satan wants so much confusion out there that you don't know which way to turn. And you'll, you'll turn and say, well, all this stuff going on, it, it, there's so many lies and, 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 and people told me that, that uh, you, uh, look at this, there's so many different Bibles, I don't know which way to go. But guess what? You have to understand God's word and truth. You have to understand in our Bibles that we can hold in front of us, and I'll say this, our King James Bibles that we can hold in front of us is where you're going to find truth. Because everything else, there's error. And I know because I've, I've done research. I've, I've studied, and I understand how to compare spiritual with spiritual. 
and everything else there's error but when you read God's word of truth you can find where, where truth is and, and, and what and how God is would have you to live and with that I'm gonna close and I'll thank everyone for listening and watching and until next time thank you <laughs>